and welcome to this episode of the Selling Through Partnering Skills podcast, where I am delighted to be joined by Mario Martinez Jr. Mario, hi. Fred, thank you for having me. Well, I'm so excited to be here on your show, man. No, I'm, I'm excited to have you. So, so Mario is the CEO and founder of Vangresso. And what Vangresso do will become apparent because I, I, was, uh, I was fortunate enough to be on Mario's own podcast. So it's a bit of pressure on me here to, uh, to try and be the host with the most. Um, and when we're talking about the evolution of sales, and when we're talking about where sales is at the moment, but there is an evolution within the evolution. Sales is changing very quickly now. And then this kind of mutation, I don't know if that's the right word, towards video is something that's happening incredibly fast. And so when I think of kind of V sales, I think video virtual, Vengresso is what, what springs to mind. That's, that's why I've, I've given you a shout, Mario. I'm going to start using V sales. Uh, give me a V. <laughs> virtual, V-sales, give me yeah. a V. Vengresso, uh, give me a V. Video. Video, virtual, Vengresso. There we go. Power of three. Clusters, mate. It's, it's, have it on me. <laughs> we'll use that in the marketing. There. But um, yeah, so yeah, that, that, this is your world. That's why I wanted to speak to you so that you can just try to make sense for us a little bit about you know what's happening and what we can do about it so let, let, let's start off I'll take this bit by bit what why is this happening at, at the pace it seems to be happening what's going on well I mean make no mistakes about it the world went digital uh, and so in 2020 we had to utilize digital tools in order to be able to connect with our buyers in some way shape or form and of course uh, if you look at the uh, amount of phone calls that went up um, and the percentage that it went up, the amount of emails that went up and the um, lower the response rate. Um, if you look at the amount of social engagement that has gone up and the reduced um, um, uh, response rate to social engagement, primarily because of what sellers are doing that are just bad. Um, now sellers are saying, okay, well, if it's not this channel, it's not this channel, it's not this channel, well, let me go to the next channel. And so they're trying all kinds of different things to be able to connect with their buyer. Now, the good news is they're doing all the right things, which is essentially leveraging what we call an omni-channel approach to prospecting. That's the right thing to do. The wrong thing is uh, to do it without the right skill training to be able to be effective to create the result that you want. And in this case, the result that we want is the ability to be able to have a connection, form a conversation online and convert that into an offline discussion. Okay, so yeah, I mean, clearly there was a massive change, but would, do you think this change was happening anyway? Were we shifting towards digital and it's just sped up because of the whole, the whole pandemic or COVID thing? Good question. So I'll give you some of my, our statistics. Um, okay. In 2017, I spent basically about uh, you know, 85, 90% of my time trying to convince sales leaders of this thing called the um, digital. In 2018, it was the exact same thing. In 2019, out of 200 um, executive level meetings, I spent about 70% of my time. So it actually started to, you know, gain some, some traction. Um, and in 2020, um, it roughly stayed the same until March 20th, um, 20, 2020. And I went from trying to convince sales leaders that their reps needed to be able to be digital instead of just using phone and email to 100% of our conversations were, this is a digital environment and how can you help us? And in most cases, sales leaders that reached out to us and entrepreneurs and individual business owners as well that, <clears throat> excuse me, that reached out to us, they were in the panic mode, the oh crap. Um, and I need training right now. Can you give me an hour? Can you give us an hour's worth of training? And it was no, Rome wasn't built overnight. You didn't learn to cold call in an hour. You didn't learn to cold call in a week for goodness sakes, there's training, there's coaching, there's reinforcement, there's all those things that go along with the training program. And unfortunately, the best time to have, the first best time to have um, uh, evolved and leveraged digital was a year ago or two years ago. The next best time is now. So let's, <laughs> let's focus in on what we need to do. And that is to get your, your, your excuse me, to get your sellers trained. So, so get, get, get everyone up to speed. And but is this just a reactive thing though? I mean, how, how are buyers with all of this? Because, you know, we, we've moved well past, we talked about it last time, didn't we? We moved past about sales is something you do to somebody. We've got to align with buyers. It's, it's yeah. consistent with how they want to operate. It's a great question because um, a, lot of, a lot of us focus in on, well, what do we think is going to move the needle? Uh, as opposed to what are the buyers telling us that is going to move the needle? 
So it's a different conversation that we're having, right? Sellers versus buyers, where it's really sellers and buyers. And that's the way we need to reframe the discussion and rethink that discussion, um, if you would. Uh, you know, what I would say is I'll start out with this. Never before in the history of selling has four things perfectly aligned. Buyers are digitally connected, socially engaged, mobile attached, and video hungry. And this is on the B2B side as well as on the B2C side, right? So if you look at digitally um, uh, connect, connected, excuse me, digitally connected, socially engaged. So if you look at digitally connected, the world on average has 3.67 uh, connected devices per person globally. So there's eight plus billion people. The average is 3.67, right? That's forecasted to go up to six in the next year. Per six person. connected devices. Yeah, so think about it. Uh, yeah. In my family household alone, <laughs> we've got four iPads. We've got four cell phones. We've got four laptops. We've got iWatch iWatches as an example, right? So now that's not every person across the world, but there's enough of connected devices within one family household or one individual um, who may have it that uh, would justify this high number of connected devices on a per person basis. Yeah. So we know that we're digitally connected. And by the way, this is a, a, a moot point to even talk about in terms of where we're at in this era right now in 2021. And as we think about what happens in the future with respect to COVID, it's not changing. Um, then we think about socially uh, connected, excuse me, socially engaged, and we look at the um, amount of social media engagement that has happened over the last year um, during the COVID uh, pandemic, and it's skyrocketed and gone through the roof. Um, last sets of numbers that I had for 2019, if I'm not mistaken, 2019 was in the U.S. alone, 80% of the U.S. population had at least one social networking profile. Now there's hundreds of social networking sites. There's you know dating.com sites. There's the big six, if you would. Um, so that that is an astronomical number, and that usage went through the roof, of course, in the last year to be digitally connected and socially engaged. Then, if you look at uh, the um, mobile attached, um, we all know that from a mobile standpoint, Google almost everything that we look at, sixty percent is on desktop, forty percent is on the mobile device. Oh my gosh. We're, you, we're on our mobile device, even inside of our own home, right? No, we could be on the desktop, but we walk out of the office from our own home. We have our mobile device in our hand. We're sitting at the table. We're cooking dinner. We're in the bathroom and we're on our, these, this mobile device. So we're mobile, mobile um, uh, attached, if you would. And with that in mind, as a seller, we need to understand, wait a minute, if I'm communicating through um, or to my buyer, FYI, heads up, we've got to keep in mind that our messages need to be a one scroll system, right? So that's 111 words usually uh, that you would have on, on a, in a message that's a one scroll touch if, uh, for, for, for a buyer. So, and then we get to the final piece, which is video hungry. So if we look at um, top five marketing uh, tactics that are reported by global marketers across the world, Content Marketing Institute identified that video is one of those top five marketing tactics. Why? Well, because video actually engages your buyer. It has two things that, that take place to, a, to an actual um, uh, consumer of a video. One, you have the visual aspect of a video and then you have the audible aspect. So two of our senses we can appeal to at one time. And it's an extremely powerful component that moves people um, to be able to do something. So video is at an all time high. In fact, if you look at YouTube, the second largest search engine in the world is YouTube. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, so with that in mind, um, we see a shift, if you would, to the use of video to consume video. So with that in mind, as a seller, when we think about what is the buyer digitally connected, socially engaged, mobile attached, video hungry, oh my gosh, parlay that over to what a current seller is. We're digitally connected, socially engaged, mobile attached, and should be video producers, right? Oh, so now you have this, no. <laughs> this overlay, this perfect overlay uh, of, a, of a relationship that we can parlay how we engage and how we connect with buyers. And as video producers, we need to understand how to actually use this channel correctly because I get a lot of bad videos, a lot of bad videos. And with that in mind, how do you actually capture that buyer's attention? Let me give you this example, Fred. Did you know 
that you have seven to 15 seconds at most based upon research to capture that buyer's attention into that video. If you do not do that within the first seven to 15 seconds, your buyer will fall off. Now think about this. As a seller, we're not trained on how to create a video that's actually going to attract and engage our buyer within the first seven to 15 seconds. What do I do? And this is one of the big problems that we see happening in the industry is we're basically going from tool to tool to tool, right? From phone to email to social media to video and a fool with a tool is still a fool. <laughs> you are so right, sir. So correct. So I, I, I wonder actually if some people don't even get this, how big this opportunity is, but the way you've just aligned out, there's this kind of this perfect storm. These four elements, they totally match up. If you're not doing it, you know, you are a fool, full stop. Yeah. Right. So let's stop being a fool. Let's get your tool. Oh no, this is, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> um, take, take over from me. This is why your podcast is so much more popular than mine. It's, 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 it's run by a master. <laughs> no, I mean, no. you're on the right track. You're right. You know, like, look, we can't, we, we can't do our job without the tool. Yeah. But you know, it's like, if I were to give, um, you know, in the old days when we used to fight with spears and swords and shields, right? If you gave a spear and a sword uh, and a shield to an inexperienced soldier and the exact same spear, sword and shield was with an experienced soldier. Yeah. Generally, unless you had luck of the draw, generally the experienced soldier is going to know how to wield that sword correctly in that shield and will generally win out on that fight. And so that's the thing we have to think about is that in a digitally connected, socially engaged, mobile attached, video hungry world, uh, some of our, our competitors have already exhausted the phone, email, and social media, which is exactly what we're trying to do. So you want to use video to be able to engage. Congratulations. I applaud you. That is the right move to make because basically if I, if, if I think of 10 prospecting messages that I receive from prospectors prospecting to me as the CEO of my company, one, maybe two mm. out of 10 messages are a video message. So it's still a, a totally green opportunity for us to be able to engage, but what a way to be able to stand out. But here's the problem. Remember I mentioned that using video appeals to two of our senses, right? Email is just one, sight. Uh, yeah. phone is just one audio, um, social media, same thing site, but now I have the ability to appeal to two of my senses to bring a buyer in. That's powerful. That's what video can do. But when done incorrectly, just like bad Super Bowl ads in the middle of the Super Bowl in the, in, in the U S boy, you know, you're hearing something and you see something you're like, Oh, that was horrible. That was a horrible video. Right. We don't want buyers to look at that and say, now that they're using their audio, audio, audible senses and their visual senses to say, oh my God, that was horrible. Because then it detracts from the message. And that is why it's so important to really level up our skill on how we do video. So I, I mentioned earlier, seven to 15 seconds. Well, let's talk about that. What do you do, right? In that first seven to 15 seconds. So I'll give you a couple of tips for the listeners who are listening in and for leaders who are listening in You've got to learn this stuff because here's the problem that's happening right now in the industry. Most of us who are 45 and older who learned how to do selling a very different way, we don't know how to do this, quote, new stuff. And so we don't know what we're looking for. We don't know what the right way to coach. We don't know what's good. We don't know what's bad because we never did it before. And we didn't have, a we don't have stories. We don't have levels of success. So leaders need to listen in to this as well. So when you send a video, you're generally going to send a thumbnail that's embedded into an email or as part of a LinkedIn message. That thumbnail needs to capture your buyer's attention. Now you can get free tools like from Loom or you can go out and pay for some awesome tools like Hippo Video as an example. And when you do this, um, you have the ability to be able to bring in what's called Giphy images. So you can create an animated uh, uh, Giphy image that's displaying and playing right there inside of your Gmail or Outlook that's going to capture that person's attention. But here's the thing. 
almost every provider out there with the exception of one that I can think of, which is BombBomb, has that play button right dead center in the middle. <laughs> so what we usually find is, is that play button, just like the YouTube button for the play, right? It's right there in the middle. And when someone sends a video message, we've got an animated Giphy with just an arm floating in here because <laughs> their, face, their face is blocked because of the play button, right? You can't see eyes, you can't see smile, you can't see the face. And so immediately you've lost the opportunity to build trust with that buyer because a smile, your yeah. eyes, your face, this is what the first thing that buy, people look at when I meet you face to face, whether virtually or in person, I build immediate sense of trust or not just by looking at your face. So and, think and about this that. Is deep, deep psychology, isn't it? This is what the human Absolutely. Brain is, but 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 this is, this is yeah. but think about this though. This is not new, and it's always something that we've known inside of sales. Illustrate this for you. We've always been trained and taught to get out in front of the buyer, shake their hand, meet face to face. Why, Fred? That's because then we got the human contact. Then we can uh, work with the person. He's, 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 he's my tribe. He's, he's, he's safe. He's a friend. He's not going to attack me. He's going to work with me. All, all that evolution. So stuff. the psychology behind that yeah. is we build trust through yeah. this yeah. yeah, and through your point touch, right? So we can send someone's um, intentions through a handshake, a hug, whatever it might be, right? And we look at the face. And we now build trust. That is why we've always been trained to get out in front of people. But now in a virtual environment, where by the way, even when the pandemic has worldwide herd immunity across the globe, organizations are already right now cutting off at least 25%. I know of Fortune 100s right now that are cutting 25% of their real estate right now. Mm -hmm. And many other organizations are saying they're going to allow up to 50% of their workforce to be able to work virtually and remotely. Depending on your role and your job, you'll have to, you know, uh, you'll have the opportunity to be able to do that. So the reality is this isn't, this isn't swinging back to the way it used to be, right? It is definitely going to be the new norm, if you would. And it's going to only get bigger and bigger and bigger as organizations have realized they can do as much as they did before or more in a virtual environment and there can reduce costs. So look, we never ever thought about these psychological impacts, but we were always trained, get in front of the customer, shake their hand. And it was because the ability to be able to see someone's face to forge that connection and build trust. That is exactly what video can do that outpaces social, that outpaces email, that out or text-based email that outpaces a phone call. Video has that ability, but you can really screw up if you don't do it right. So that the, 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 the tip I gave so far is the animated Giphy. Yeah, yeah. Leverage the animated Giphy. The second tip I gave was make sure you can see that smile, make sure you can see that warm greeting, that gesture, you can bring them in. In the absence <laughs> of being able to touch you, Fred, and shake that hand, you can begin to build that trust, yeah. albeit at a potentially slower pace, but through the eyes, through the face, through the smile, and through your vocal abilities. So now we get into now, how do we create some of these videos? And that's where we get into our, our training program on video is really around leveraging um, the nonverbal and verbal cues. So the nonverbal, the gestures, what gestures should you make? For example, if I send you a video and I say, listen, uh, Fred, there are two things directly below. I can sit here, for those of you, you're audibly listening to the podcast, you can't see me and Fred talking live, but just imagine now uh, you're, you're listening to a video message and all you see is a talking head, no gestures whatsoever, no modulation whatsoever. Here's how that sounds. Hi, Fred, directly below are two items that I think will be of value to you. I would really like to have a conversation with you. Uh, can we take 30 minutes of, of your time? That's option A. You're watching this video, good or bad video. Look, all you, you don't even have to see me be able to not do gestures, no modulation, nothing like that, right? So now we get to um, the use of gestures, uh, nonverbal cues, modulation, and it might go something like this, where I'm positioned when I first open up that video and I say, hey, Fred, Mario here. 
look directly below this video in answer to your questions are two things the first thing that you want to look for is an item called whatever it might be the second thing that i've included inside there is an is a thumbnail that reads whatever it might be i'd love to be able to schedule that time with you as we talked about directly below this video is a little blue button that says book a meeting with mario go ahead and click on that button it'll make life easy so we can avoid email scheduling volleyball all right, there you go. So wow. now what you've heard now is an evident demonstration of modulation. You've heard me have excitement, some passion in the voice. What you also can't, you, can, you can't see, but what I was doing here was when I said the first item is I put my finger up. The second item, I put two fingers up. I said directly below, I put two arms up and I pointed directly below so that people can see and, and be directed where to go and what to look at on the page. So now you bring gestures into it. And what happens, Fred, when I say directly below? What is the natural thing that you as the recipient are going to do? My eyes went. <laughs> exactly right. You're not even, you're, I, I, I you're watching it live. I, was told. I <laughs> did what I was told. I know what's below. I know there's exactly. nothing below. It's, it's my own PC below, but I, I still so, followed. Yeah. And video, what you were we also doing, I'm sorry, what go you ahead. were also doing was um, you were very open. When you weren't gesturing, you opened, this is the trainer in me, because I, I know this stuff, yeah? You were open, you moved your hands from center to far, center to outside body line at least three times. Because that's saying, yeah. hey, look, I'm open. I, you know, I, I'm here, look, I'm exposing the vulnerable parts of my body. Because again, the brain, we don't know that it's over video. You're saying, hey, look, he's not scared. He's not hiding all these vital organs. You, you, again, you're very deliberately doing that. So I'm thinking, yeah, this guy's totally approachable. He's going in the friend type as That's opposed exactly to the right. foe type who wants to attack me. Yeah. So I'll, I'll comment on the friend on the friend concept in just one second. Um, I also want to point out to you that through video, I was pointing directly below in the video. I've got my arms up, my two fingers right. pointed down uh, on right hand and left hand, and I'm pointing down directly below. And I have the ability as a seller to impact you as a buyer. What is that? I can get you to go down, to look yeah. down. That's what I can get you to do, right? Because I'm directing you. Or if I say directly in the upper right-hand corner of the screen over here is my phone number. Now, what do you look for? As soon as I, as soon as I look up to my, your right, my left, yeah. and I point to the upper right-hand corner of the screen where my phone number would live, would, would, would live at on this quote yeah. landing yeah. page, yeah. you're immediately looking at does he have his phone number there? Does he have his email there? Right. Those are the things that you're looking at. So I have that ability to do that. The other thing you commented on was the friend um, um, voice or friend aspect of, of selling. And this is where a lot of sellers don't realize that words matter inside of a, inside of a message or inside of a video. So um, interestingly enough, uh, in a study, in a research that was done by SalesLoft using uh, roughly about 200 million um, emails that they, that they analyzed, when you opened up an email, um, excuse me, when you sent an email and you said, um, hello, Fred, hi, Fred, hey, Fred, there was actually no uh, difference between the open, excuse me, between the reply rate and engagement rates between either of those words, right? Hello, hi, or hey. So um, in our world, when we teach in social engagement, hello is a formal voice. Hello, Fred, that's formal. If I said, um, hi, Fred, that is a friend voice. If I said, hey, Fred, that's a best friend voice. Now, audibly, you when I say those three words, naturally, yeah. you heard something different when you um, when I said those things. So in social media, we always teach, always try to go for best friend voice. Hey, Fred, exclamation point. Now, a lot of sellers are actually uncomfortable with that. And mm. so at a minimum default, you use the friend voice, which is hi, Fred, right? Mm. No hello, no dear. Like that's too formal. That's not what you do inside social media. So on email text, totally got that. But now on video, let's, let, me, let me illustrate that. And for those of you listening in, you'll be able to hear the difference between the three different voices. Let me start out with uh, formal. Hello, Fred. Okay, now I'm waving. I'm saying, hello, Fred, you heard that. Now, if I were to naturally say, hello, Fred, that's like saying hello to your neighbor. Hello, John, right? It's like, you're, it's a neighbor that you're not BFF with, but you just know them because you're in the neighborhood. So you're being cordial. That's what it sounds like. But um, if, uh, if it was mom or dad or brother or sister or 
you know, um, someone inside the, ch- the congregation, the church, you'd say, hi, Fred. Right. So now all of a sudden that voice all of a sudden goes up. And if I were to have you as my best friend or maybe it is mom and dad as well, uh, auntie, uncle, cousin, whoever it might be, brother, sister, wife, children, you would say, hey, Fred. Right. Or, hey, Fred. Now that shows passion and excitement. And, and so what happens is, is just by modulating your voice with those three words, it naturally goes from formal to friend to best friend voice, just naturally. And that's just something that we do normally as humans, and we don't even realize it. But when we open up a video, our video that we want to greet somebody with is, is a, hey, Fred, is not a, hello, Fred. Right. So that's really key in understanding this. <laughs> Um, particular aspect of so I just, of, I just of got video. a kind of a greetings earthlings yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right God, now that would this be funny guy's a bit odd hey fred yeah okay got you <laughs> you, you now you now absolutely you can bring in some great things into video and the yeah. greetings earthlings now that would capture <laughs> someone's attention but you have to do it with the right modulation and with the with the right voice inflection and absolutely targeting the person that you know is going to find that funny is to not think you're just a complete idiot <laughs> yeah yeah that's that is so interesting about getting the getting that 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 tone so quickly so seven seconds seven fifteen seconds that's the kind of this 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 magic number um so cool so we don't, we want to get people to see our face. They want to see us. We want to show we're open. We use, we use body language. Yeah. So just because we're on video, we've got this, 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 this smaller box, but make sure you're, you're positioned so that you can use as much of it as possible. And are, are you even saying exaggerate it because it, it stuff can get lost in it? Or does then that look a bit too hammy? Do we need to be careful no. with that? No, it's a good point. So we're not exaggerating anything. We're being intentional. Ah, okay. That's different. Okay. Very there's, different. There's, there is a difference. Yeah, there is a difference. So never exaggerate, you know, who you are. I think the authentic, the authentic self needs to come out inside of a video. Never exaggerate it. Uh, never force it. Now, if you're naturally a person who doesn't talk with their hands and is pretty monotone, then okay, then you might have to exaggerate, right? But uh, generally speaking, most sellers that I've met in, 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 in my life are, you know, not, not like that. But you might have that situation. Um, yeah. But generally speaking, I would say what you, what you want to be focused on is being intentional. For example, if I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that we had a chance to be able to have a discussion. So you might use your hands and, and do like the around the world. I'm so glad that we had a, ha- we had a chance to be able to have a discussion, right? Um, you want to be intentional. If you say, now, the, the, one of the things I want to talk to you about, instead of pointing at them on the video, you're going to do the old Bill Clinton, which is, you know, yeah. I'm going to hold my fist together and I'm pointing my, my index finger, which is, I don't even know how to describe it. It's curled and my thumb at the yeah, top, yeah. right? Like, how do you describe that? It's like, yeah. I, I, the fist. Uh, it's so, some, so, so some at point, any yeah. rate, you, you can like you, right? You're pointing at someone and, and over there and you want to be intentional with yeah. the gestures that really add impact to the words that are coming out of your mouth. Yeah, because I mean, we would never tell salespeople to point, but that, that looks like a recruitment poster, doesn't it? That's, that's really <laughs> fry. Oh, you? Well, I'm not going to walk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Buying exactly. stuff from you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh, no, that's cool. So enhanced, enhanced and, in, and intention. Intentional is, is the best word on that. So, yeah, be wow, intentional. This, this is an absolute masterclass. Where I, I knew I'd reached out to the right person here because uh, there's, there's a lot of people that just are hopefully listening to this and go, this, as you said, you, your words, this isn't new. It's just different or you're using it in a slightly different way. Um, you're just using it towards the camera. And, and really, if you're, if you're a professional salesperson, you should be able to, to shift those skills and to use them in this format. You know, Absolutely. Your, your, you're your doing building it blocks, your structures are there. You understand yeah. the challenges of the customer. You understand what's probably yeah, painful for them. You understand how you need to reach out for them. You're just using a different format. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is nothing new. You're just using it in a different location with a different application. And now you have to be much more intentional. Yeah. There is a problem though. And the problem I mentioned earlier, which I want to touch on, which is with leaders. And that is most of us in the B2B world, most of us who are leaders, again, that age 45 and older, we have no idea what's good or what's bad. Mm-hmm. And we look at some of these things and we're like, that's great. This is good. Or that's not good. 
but we don't know why. We haven't been trained. We don't really have a good sense of what is good and what's not good because we look at it from self. Do I like this video? Would I open this video? Now that's a real good baseline to think through things like would I do this? That's a good baseline. But you've heard me talk a little bit about science today on how we communicate. And if you start thinking about these elements and putting them into practice, you might start looking at your reps videos differently. But the big problem is, is it's not the rep, it's the leader. Mm -hmm. That's the number one problem that we see today. And what I mean by that is, is if you're a leader listening to this podcast, you should probably ask yourself, hmm, when was the last time that I prepared a video message for one of my buyers? When was the last time that I prepared a prospecting message less than one minute to be able to capture that buyer's attention? When was the last time that I sent a thank you video for becoming a customer? Whoa. Awesome. When was the last yeah. time that I asked a customer for a referral and did it in the form of a video? When was the last time that I sent an all hands update to either my sales team, my sales region, my country, or the global organization where I'm on video, not produced by marketing? <laughs> Why do I say not produced by marketing? Because that is not duplicatable. That is not replicatable. This means that I, have a, I, as a leader, have to be able to get in front of the camera and record it and show my sellers that they can do the same thing too. And it's okay to have an and, an um, and a but, and a, mm, uh, you know, those, those, th those pauses. And it's okay to use an editing tool that I have within my um, a video tool that can allow me to clip out a bad part if I wanted to, right? It's okay to do those things. But to have something professionally designed, professionally developed by a marketing team is not duplicatable and replicatable at down in the field. And as sales leaders, we have to be leading from the front always because in sales, it's monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> and <laughs> if you don't do it, guess what? Your reps won't do it either. So if you think about those use cases that I just gave you, most sales leaders listening into your podcast right now are saying, shoot, you're right. I haven't done any of those things, or I only did one of them and it was like six months ago. So therefore you have no business being in the business at being a coach. You cannot coach your sellers if you yourself are not doing it. You must lead from the front and you must be doing prospecting videos and you must be sending those things out and trying to see what moves the needle out in the field and test the waters. And I don't care if you're a chief sales officer, a chief revenue officer, a VP of sales, a director of sales, a manager of sales, a sales engineering manager, and go back up to VP of sales engineering. If you have the word sales in your title, or in your job responsibilities, your job is to produce sales and a lead. Go produce. Mm. And that's the problem that we have today is we have still fools with tools are still fools. And worse yet, the people that are supposed to be coaching them are also the same individuals that don't have the experience. And the worst part about it is, the coach is not even using the tool. So we just have foolishness. That's what we have. And this is not the fault of any sales leader of any sort. Of course, my message is not like, you know, woe is them and they're not, you know, not smart. They're dumb or this is not that. This is my age and older. We did not learn how to sell, engage with buyers this way. And so you can't fault us. What does that mean that you need to do? It means that you need to get help. And it does not mean that you go to your marketing person, your social media manager and say, hey, can you teach us how to create videos? No, no seller will respect someone who's never done it, never carried a bag, never hit quota, never went to president's club, teaching them how to do something 
that quite frankly, they've never done and carried a quota on and actually been able to sell deals with. So that's where companies like Vingresso come into play, where we help organizations on a worldwide global scale, whether you're a 10 person sales organization or you're a 10,000 person sales organization, we help you develop the skills to be able to engage uh, and attract um, your buyers to grow the sales pipeline. So our tagline, prospect better, sell more. Brilliant, sir. Brilliant. And where can people find you? Sorry about because that. Because I'm, I'm, no, no, no I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, that people are listening to this and thinking, in the, best, in the best possible way, I need help because yeah, and and it's it's okay to ask for help. It's like we don't expect you. Why would you know this stuff? It was not even something when you were first doing your sales training. So now it's when you've got to learn, and then as you say, walk the talk, lead by example. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, That's these are getting in touch with you. All these virtual selling skills or digital selling skills, uh, however way you want to call it, um, you can visit vingresso.com. V as in Victor. E N G-R-E-S-O, vingresso.com. Uh, you could also find me on LinkedIn and say you heard me on uh, Fred's uh, podcast here and uh, you wanted to reach out, send me a personalized LinkedIn connection request. Um, I'm literally, uh, I'm only accepting personalized connection requests from individuals. So I will not accept a non-personalized. Um, and that's just na the name of the game because I need to know who, who you are and where you're from and how you found me. Because uh, there's only a certain number of LinkedIn connections that you can have. So keep that Guys, in mind. Send a video to him. Get connected to Mario. He he shares brilliant stuff. And get on their mailing list. Um, I don't know if you know Mario, by the way. I was listening to Bernie. So Bernie's your, your marketing. Guys, I listened to his podcast the other day. Um, and, and again, I just sent a, sent a message straight to him going, Guys, the stuff you're sending out is brilliant. And I'm not just saying that to blow smoke. Honestly, the value that you put out, which I won't reach out to you, you know, is, is, is phenomenal. So I appreciate you know, that, Fred. We work you. hard in the content team to, to bring a lots of value. Cool. Right. I've got a question for you then. And yeah. this is about, this is, we are not going to do virtual for this question. We're not virtual, not digital. When we're allowed to travel, you and I are going to get on a plane and we're going to go somewhere and we're going to do some good. And yeah, we're going to do some good with our own fair hands. Right. So where are we going to yeah. go? We've got options. We've got Asia, Africa or Latin America. Where are we going to pick? Why are we going to pick it? Latin America all day long. <laughs> uh, uh, so so, um, uh, you know, something very, very near and dear to my heart is, you know, a lot of individuals, um, they're they're focused in on helping someone or something. Right. So you've got the women in sales. You've got, you know, a lot of different movements that are happening all over the, the globe. Um, for me, when we started this company, there were two things that I was really focused on. And that was uh, making sure that we had a diverse um, organization. I was very, very focused on that. In fact, if you look at our four um, uh, core founding um, uh, partners of the firm of Ingresso, um, we are a 50% plus minority owned business. So Bernie's Cuban, I'm Mexican and Filipino. I'm also actually um, Caucasian as well. And Vivica is a female. One of our C-suite is sitting in as, as, as a woman. And by the way, she's not the chief human resources officer. It bugs the snot out of me when women are placed in the C-suite as a C -C chief human resources officer. Like, really? Come on. Like, it's time for us to move past that. Um, anyways, so she's our chief visibility officer. So that was super important. The other thing that um, I really wanted to build, and that was um, a team focused on my cultural roots, um, and that is uh, uh, of folks of Latino descent. So our company is 70, a uh, little over 70% of our company is of some sort of ethnic um, minority background. And of that 70%, 55% are actually of Latino descent. So um, for me, uh, I've got a whole team down in Colombia, in Medellin and Bogota, um, oh, wow. and we have a team out in uh, the Philippines as well. Uh, we have uh, uh, some individuals in Hawaii. No, excuse me. Now, now I'm supposed to be going to Hawaii, excuse me, India and Canada. <laughs> so uh, we've got folks all over the globe on four different continents. So my first stop is Latin America. I, I was laughing because I pretty much, I banked my house on that you would say that because I, you know, I, <laughs> I know that background. But, but the reason I ask is that just as a little thank you for guys like yourself who've given up time to talk on the podcast, I, I also believe in business for good. 
Uh, and actually, I'm a member of an organization called B1G1, which stands for Business for Good, which is a brilliant platform to be able to make donations. Uh, and, the, and the donations that you can uh, make are aligned to the UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals. 17 goals. I, I, I aligned to number four because it's education. So I've got ready to rock and roll four donations or three donations set up. And, and just as a thank you for you coming on the podcast, you pick Latin America. I'm going to make donations so that we're going to train some women in business in Guatemala. As it happens. Oh, so nice. It's just, just as a thank you for, you know, you giving us, you know, give me an hour of your time to talk about this. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do that as a, as a thanks. That's fabulous. Well, thank you for doing that. That's it's, it's my pleasure. But, you know, thank you so much. You've been as I knew you would, incredibly generous with the stuff you shared there. And, you know, hopefully whet the appetite and just prompted people to go and do something. Just start with something. It is a bit intimidating, yes, but just do something and listen to what customers say when they receive it. They're, it's a very, very positive response usually, isn't it? So Yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. Well, I'm happy to be here, and uh, that's my job as a modern sales evangelist. I'm out there evangelizing modern selling and way for reps to be able to engage with their target buyer. So, um, you know, we live, breathe and die by this. Uh, and um, we've got to, if you, if you want to have some really great insights, there's um, an article on our website called the definitive guide to prospecting for sales leaders. Um, it's our beefiest article that we've ever written. And it's filled with information and all of our secret sauce, our cadences, our model, um, our how-tos. Um, in fact, one of our founders uh, wrote me a message uh, about a week ago or so and said, hey, like you really lifted up, you know, everything on here. You really opened up the kimono on this one. And I said, yes, yes, we did, because we really want to be able to provide that value um, back to the community. So I would encourage you to um, get access to that article. Brilliant. Evangelism job well and truly done, I would say there, Mario. Thanks a lot, Fred. I Thank appreciate you so it, much. man. No, thank you.